Oh, hey guys. We're back with more on how to draw inside of Adobe Animate. So I'm going to go over all the different tools that you would use to create artwork in a static image. And then in a future video, I'm going to actually talk about how to make that static image come to life and move. Now, before I go any further, I wanted to mention there is a cheat sheet for all the hotkeys that I've been using. And this is an old cheat sheet that existed <laughs> Back in the day when I first did my YouTube tutorials, you might remember this, some of you, I think it's handy because you can print it out and you can actually use scissors. And this part here will match up with like the tools panel at the left side of your screen. This up here is stuff for animation that I'm going to get into in the next video. And then down here are some other keys just that are handy to know. The control one through five that I've got here are custom. I went ahead and set those in my keyboard shortcuts. And then you've got others down here that are also handy. So if you're interested in just memorizing this, I mean, if you're signed up for the class, especially, that's going to be tons of content and it'll be handy if you're using keyboard shortcuts along the way, it's going to save you a ton of time. If you just learn them now and get up to speed on that. Okay. So don't ever tell me I didn't help you learn those uh, hotkeys. Also, if you hover over these, as you've been noticing, hotkeys tend to show up. All right, so creating art inside of Animate is different than creating art inside of Photoshop. And I'm assuming that a lot of people watching this video have used Photoshop or a program like it. If you have not, don't worry. Just try to follow along and you should be able to keep up just fine. We're not gonna learn Photoshop and that's not required to know Photoshop to learn these videos. I just use it as a point of reference because there's a lot of differences there, but there's also a lot of similarities. Okay, so I've come down here and I've created a new layer. And I'm going to hide my other layer so that we have a blank slate for me to kind of illustrate an illustration uh, of what's going on over here. So in animate, if I paint this line here and I do like say a burst or something of that nature, right? It looks pretty normal. It looks a lot like it would look say in Photoshop. In fact, I have Photoshop open here and I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the same basic thing. See if I can make it as good. Nope, it's not as good. Okay, that's fine. That's not Photoshop's fault. That's my fault. If you zoom in in Photoshop, you'll start to notice pixelation happening. <clears throat> if you zoom in as close as you possibly can, it even shows you all the pixels here in the background, right? And then these pixels at the edge of the white are actually fading off to blend in with that background. They call that anti-aliasing so that it gives it a nice smooth feeling when you're looking at it back at 100%. Up here at the top, I can see 100%, okay? Now in Animate, if we do the same thing, let me switch back over here, and I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, it also shows me the pixels, but it stays perfectly crisp. Now this is the key difference between a vector-based program like Animate or Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is the same way and Photoshop or like Krita or something else like that, that uses raster based graphics. So what does that mean? Well, if I come back here to Photoshop, I can come in and I can erase these pixels, right? And I can erase them a little so they're kind of like faded or I can erase them a lot. And so they're like very sharp edged and that kind of thing. But the pixel is just an amount of color and then an amount of transparency. And that's really how it tracks all of its information in Photoshop from like thousands and thousands of pixels across a whole image, right? Whereas in Animate, if I wanted to do the same thing, I actually could. So I could come in and the eraser previews is white, which is weird because the paint fill is also white. But anyway, the eraser tool comes in and it chunks it away, but it doesn't have the same ability to feather that edge and get it like nice and soft. So in a vector-based program, you end up with very crisp edges. It's like a signature of it. And there's things that I'm going to do in the class that you'll see where I can add like glows and other things like that with more of a post-process outside of animate, but that's after we've exported the image out or the video out. And then we can like do all kinds of fun things with it to get it to feel glowy and so forth. Animate does have glow and blur, but it's really low tech and I don't recommend using it. I recommend doing it in Photoshop or After Effects, whichever you're more comfortable with. Okay, now the really cool advantage though, you might wonder, well, okay, if 
it can't do feathered edges, why the heck are they doing it with vector-based? But the really cool advantage is with vector-based graphics, you can do this. I can hit the paint fill button and it fills in nice and clean. And this whole fill is all just one nice big thing. Whereas in Photoshop, because it has these feathered edges, if I paint fill in the middle, it doesn't quite work the same. It leaves that weird edge around. And I know there's workarounds to this. You could use the lasso tool to draw your shape and all that kind of thing. It's really just a different way of thinking. It's a different way of working. I think they both have their pros and cons for sure. It's just one of the nice things about animate is you can get these shapes to just blend seamlessly together. You can also come in here and do like really quick and easy divisions. If I type Y on the keyboard for the new paintbrush tool, I'm going to just mock that constantly because I think it's hilarious that they didn't take the time to distinguish the naming of classic brush tool, which is actually a fill versus the new paintbrush tool, which is a stroke. And you can see the difference down here, like the stroke color. Let's say we want that to be blue. And then, you know, the fill color, we want that to be like, uh, yellow or something, right? So if I come over here with the Y key and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to like come in here and, you know, do whatever, just make it fun. All right. I don't know, whatever, something like that. Right. And then I hit K for paint fill and then I can actually fill that in. Oh, maybe I should have done that reverse. Yeah, that's better. I like that better. And so now these shapes are very clean, very crisply divided, and it's just it's just really nice. I really like it and the feel of it. If you want to get rid of that stroke, which I'm sure you do, you do V for select, and then you can double click on it. And now what we've got is every single part of that network of strokes that has the same width and the same color is going to get selected. And so you can double click on that and delete it. Notice that um, you know, it comes all the way to the edge here. When that stroke went over the edge, that's something that you want to make sure you do. Like if you're going to enclose an area, make sure you don't leave little gaps like this. That's super important. With the select tool, you can grab these little tips of the strokes and you can like pull them around. Notice that the iconography changes when you're over a corner or a tip, it turns into like an angle, little angle thing. And when you're over a curve, of any kind, it's like a curved thing by the mouse, which is pretty uh, intuitive to learn once you get the hang of it. And so you can like do fun things like you can grab these edges, and you can like pull them around and twist them so you get like nice little sharp points, you know. It's just a fun way to draw, it's a fun way to uh, create artwork. I actually, I actually like using Animate for a lot of my uh, static images, not just animated images. I'll come in here and I'll create all kinds of fun, fun things. Oops. Get that sharp to a point. There we go. <clears throat> I've made my point here. All right. So there we go. We double click on that network of lines, hit delete, double click on that little network of lines and hit delete. So a stroke, think of that as like a boundary or an outer edge. And then a fill is like the interior of something, right? That's what's going on. So each of these is a different fill. Now I've got the white fill here. And if I click on it once, it'll highlight. And then if I click on it again, I can drag it around. I can actually separate it. That kind of, that's kind of fun. Now beware of this because object mode does have some advantages, right? <laughs> With object mode turned on, uh, I could make well, I could, I could even turn it into an object by hitting control G that was on the shortcuts list. Now this is an object, right? So now when I leave it on top of this yellow, even though they're on the same layer, it doesn't ruin it. It doesn't break anything, if I hit undo a bunch. And then it's not an object and I leave it on the yellow and then I deselect it, I'm doing something else. And then I come back to move it again. It cuts out the space where it was on the yellow, which is a huge pain. So. You want to be kind of aware that these different fills that are on the same layer, they don't always play nice. They, they clip into each other and they bump into one another. So you just have to be aware of that as you're refining your art. So you could imagine how we would take a principle like this and then apply that to our animation, right? 
we could come in here and we could add like highlight layers and other things like that, get it all feeling nice with different colors and so forth. And then of course, export it out, make it feel glowy and whatever other software we want to use. All right, next up is what the heck we were, were we doing in that first video when we were animating and the nitty gritty of all the other features that I didn't show you to make the animation come alive.